My name is uh, Bala Ramasamy. I'm a professor of economics at China Europe International Business School. The fact that economies slow down after a certain period, I think it's a well-known fact uh, in a sense that, you know, the, 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 the performance that China has had in the last 30 years is a miracle. Uh, and I think, uh, you know, obviously, like all miracles, like all dreams, you know, at some point we have to come back to reality. Uh, so, you know, if, if people expect that, you know, China will continue at this, you know, 8, 9, 10 percent growth that it has had in the past, there is no country in the world that has actually done this, right? So the fact that China has done this for 30 years is it, really good. But this is not going to be at that pace anymore. Uh, because I think, you know, we, we tend to forget that when we talk about growth, uh, the denominator keeps on increasing. Right? I just give you, you know, kind of uh, a figure, you know, to think about. Um, if you look at the growth that China has had, say, for example, in 2014, the amount of that growth, say, for example, about, you know, seven, seven and a half percent, that growth, that seven and a half percent alone is larger than the entire GDP of China 20 years ago. Right. So the kind of growth that we are talking about, this is huge growth because the denominator keeps on you know, increasing, right? So we're not talking about China, uh, you know, going into a recession. It is slowing down simply because, you know, the model uh, is being changed, right? Or, or better to say, uh, uh, you know, the Chinese authorities are trying to change that model of growth that China has been following for so many years, right? So, uh, uh, and, and I look at it as, you know, there is a, there is a kind of a change in the bus driver, and you can't change the bus driver when the bus is speeding at that, you know, 7 8%, right? So obviously the bus has to slow down a bit so that the transition of this model uh, is going to be as least painful as possible. I think that there are several changes that is, uh, I think, kind of happening at about the same time. And maybe I think that this is one of the problems because we are having too many changes happening at the same time. And that's the reason why the, uh, the, the, the risk kind of, uh, you know, multiplies, right? So one, of course, we know this idea of moving from an investment-based model to a consumption-based model, right? We're talking about moving from uh, a, a reliance on exports to one that is based on the domestic economy. We are talking about how we have to move away from, you know, state-owned enterprises to private enterprises. So this is a whole lot of, you know, that's already three changes in, in, in the model that, uh, you know, China is used to. Uh, I, I think also this idea of m taking growth from the coastal areas, from the uh, the large cities like Shanghai, Beijing, uh, and so on, into the inland provinces, into the you know uh, lower tier cities, right? So that's another change in the model that is uh, that is happening, and and I think also uh, you know with the with the um, you know the thinking of the Chinese people you know itself, right? So obviously, uh, uh, say for example in China, this uh, you know e-commerce you know is, is also changing from offline to online, right? So these are these are these are many changes that are taking place within the economy within short that short period, right? And in addition to that, is this uh, drive by the leadership to try to you know remove as much corruption as possible within the system, right? Now I, I would think that if you take any economy and you put all these changes together, obviously uh, uh, you know there is going to be. Um, there's going to be a certain amount of uh, uh, risk that is going to be involved with so many changes happening at the same time. How fast China is growing is actually anybody's guess. Yeah, uh, you know, whether uh, one should believe the official figures or not, you know, this, this is really, I mean, you know, it's so difficult to say. And I think one reason that we, we should keep in mind is this is a huge economy we're talking about, right? With, with the, the 1.4 billion people, with, you know, 30 provinces and so on. Uh, you know, the best statistician would not be able to figure out what the GDP of China is going to be, right? So at best, it is a great guess that somebody makes, right? But I think, uh, you know, if we, if we look at the rate of growth, right, of... Uh, 
uh, you know, 7 to 8 percent. This might be an overestimate because uh, sometimes when we look at some of the other, let's say, um, complementary uh, data, say, for example, if you talk about uh, growth in electricity consumption, now, that data seems to show that it is kind of not growing as fast as 7%. In fact, you know, in, in, in recent quarters, for example, it is like more like, you know, 0%, right? Uh, uh, similarly, if you talk about the amount of uh, goods being transported by the railway system, that is not also growing, uh, you know, as fast as the economic growth. So if we look at some of the other data, there is some amount of inconsistency. Right. So I think that's the reason why many analysts around tend to put the growth at about, you know, maybe four to five percent. But four to five percent for the second largest economy in the world, this is still pretty good growth, I have to say. Right. So 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 I think that that point we need to keep in mind, China is still growing. The amount of uh, 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 um, addition to the economy. Uh, every year, this is very significant. This is this is much larger than economies of uh, you know many other countries.